This next lesson is going to be a quick one. We're going to use view to loop over a list and show that in our template. Now the directive for showing a list in view is v4. And that's very similar in verbiage to the JavaScript for loops. We'll go back over to VS Code and I already opened up 04 and the index.html file in there. And we'll open up that as well. And I already started light server. You don't really want to watch me do that over and over again. In our starter files, we already have a list of users, which is an array of objects. And the first is me, second is Nick, and the third is going to be Holly, all scotchers. We're going to take this and loop over it really quickly. Now the trick is I want to do this in JavaScript as well as in view. So actually plain JavaScript, let's move this down. That's our array of users. And here in plain JavaScript, we're going to have a div class of user list. And maybe we should make that a UL since it's going to be, yeah, let's make that a UL. It's going to be a list, an unordered list of users. All right, for JavaScript, we're going to take this list and then we're going to loop over it and inject it into this user list. So let's start doing that in JavaScript. Const user list is equal to document.query selector, and we have to get that dot user list. And then since we already have our users array up here, we're going to use the users array and one of the JavaScript built in methods, users.for each function user. And then once we have each user, we're going to loop over them right here, thanks to JavaScript. We're going to do a couple different things. We have to create an li item for each of these. So it will be li will be the first user, a second user, a third user, like that. So down here, we're going to say const user item is equal to document dot create element. And we're going to create an li for each of these. And remember, we're looping over the users. And this is what we're going to do for each of these users. User item dot inner HTML is equal to, and I'm going to use the ES6 template string backticks. And this is the thing above the tab on your keyboard. We're going to say image source is equal to, and we're going to say user dot avatar and close that. Width is 200, height is 200. BR to do a new line. Name is user.name and thanks to ES6 we can do this all inside our template strings username is user.username and once we have created this li and we've filled the li's in our html we can actually append this now to that user list that we just grabbed user list dot append child oh lots of lots of code here item very nice. Now we have our three users all looped over. And you can imagine if we're doing this in JavaScript and we start having to add styles like a div class author card or something like that and start looping things over, then this template might actually get pretty large and unwieldy, especially when we don't have uh, syntax highlighting here inside of our ES6 template string. And it's also hard if we pass this off to another developer and he or she goes to look at our user list right here. How do they know that the user list is getting injected in here? There's no sign that anything should be happening here. The only way they would possibly know that this was happening is if they scrolled down and somehow parsed all this to see what was going on. You could even make this a little bit easier. You could say function inject user into list, and then you would say user, and we would take all of this right here, cut that out, put that here, and then say users.for each inject user into list. So it's a little bit more readable that way, but still not the best. And especially when you have to scale this and maybe you have multiple lists, not the best way to do it. Lucky for us, this is where view comes into play. We'll close all that out, comment that out, comment this out. We don't need that. And let's start working on the view side of things. And we'll see how quickly and easily we can get this done. We'll say element is app data 
users is users, which is that users array from up here. And that's it for our view instance. Now all we have to do is use our view data binding in the template. Well, we need an ID is equal to app here. And now we can say UL class user list. And inside of here, li, we're gonna use that v4 binding that we learned about, that directive v4 user in users. And now here we can say image colon source, which is the same as vbind. And we'll put the width because I like to do those. Before we do any of the view bindings, vbind source is equal to user.avatar. VR name, user.name, VR username, user.username. And let's get a little spacing in here. And now the template is directly inside of our HTML and we can see very easily what's happening. We can see this v4 so we know that there's a view instance attached to it. We can see vbind or just the colon source so that we know source is coming out of this user object. And in this way, we're using view to loop over a list and very easily, look how much code we saved down here. All of this function that is maybe not so readable, especially if we leave our code and come back in three, four or five months, who knows what we would read this as. But down here, very simple, we have the users list and up here, very simple, we're looping over the users list. That's templating and lists. Very useful, very common to use inside of our view templates.